Hey guys, Sweet Banana Gaming here, coach of your Orlando Solgaleo here with week five. All right, we're already in week five of the PGBL with some battle strategies. If you did not watch the previous uh, week's battle against the Seattle Silv Allies, go ahead and check it out. Spoilers, we finally got our first W. It's really nice, it feels good, but we can't rest on our laurels because this week we are going to be doing battle against the New Jersey Brobats. They're actually our rivals, so if I understand this correctly, we're gonna battle them twice in the regular format. So we're gonna battle them this week, they're gonna have a week battling someone else, and then the following week we get to battle them again. So that should be interesting, uh, depending on who wins the first match, seeing what we do to change it up. Um, yeah, but in the meantime, let's get right down to it. Uh, I, I will tell you right now that this team is not entirely done being flushed out. There's a few things that I want to switch around, um, but I've been playing with a this basically this build um, on Showdown with a couple alterations, just testing out how things go. Uh, first, first off, um, I'll go down here. Uh, these are the six Pokemon, and. Uh, I would really, really love it if I could just have an extra team slot uh, for... Um, oh, I guess you guys can't see all six of them. I'll, I'll put it up uh, this way, because of the size of the window. All right, I'll put it up this way. You can see across the top. Those are the six that I'm going with, probably. Slowbro, Donphan, Espeon, Shaman, Charizard, and Landris. Now... Uh, if there's one Pokemon I would really like to have an extra slot for, it would be Galvantula, because he he has a lot of slow or moderate um, speed Pokemon on his team. However, a lot of the biggest threats, of course, the Mega Beedrill, the Kartana, um, well, the Crobat doesn't really matter uh, because it's it's flying type, but mainly the Beedrill and the Kartana and potentially the Gardevoir if he decides to scarf it are all going to be threats, and the Zygarde 10%, if he chooses to bring it. Uh, those are all uh, decent threats, probably some of the best threats on his team. Well, let me get let me get to Gardevoir. Let me just talk about Gardevoir for a second, because... Um, we, th uh, this team had three changes made to it. Uh, Chinchino, Scrafty... No, not Chinchino. Um, Zygarde 10%, Scrafty, and Gardevoir um, are new additions in place of... Salamence, Meowstic, and I i can't for the life of me remember the other one right now, but anyway, the, the one that I'm mainly focused on here is the switch from Salamence to Gardevoir, because Salamence could have been a major threat on his team, and with that being said, Gardevoir could be a threat as well. I mean, he could run a Calm Mindset that would be pretty, um, pretty formidable, but it's possible because of its speed he could run a Choice Scarf set, and in which case, it would outspeed everything on my team, um, except the Espeon, but only because only because Espeon is scarfed. Now, this is why I would like to find a place for Galvantula on this team to set up sticky webs. I'm just not sure who else I can do without, especially Donphan was not going to be on the team, but given I have no hazard removal and he's got the Necrozma, which... Uh, he doesn't... I've, I've seen him use a more offensive set on this thing, but given its potential to wall pretty much everything and set up rocks easily, I need to keep options for hazard removal open. So, um, as of right now, this is it. I mean, Slowbro potentially could be swapped out, but I don't know if I want to swap out Slowbro. Slowbro can, in the right situation, um, set up on something... I don't know. Uh, I, I would like to find room for a Galvantula on this team, but as of right now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go over the sets uh, real quick and, and tell you what may or may not be subject to change. So we have our Slowbro here, and unlike my uh, usual Slowbro set I've been using, this is actually a specially defensive Slowbro. Calm instead of bold, and max HP, max special defense instead of max defense. But everything else is the same. Regenerator, Leftover, Side Shock, Calm Mind, Slack Off, Scald. It, it pretty much is what it is. I um, unfortunately don't live anything from Mega Beedrill too well uh, because of the lack of defense investment, but I did the calcs. Even with the extra defense investment, I uh, I don't live much better. It's still a two-shot, basically. So um, the main reason for this being special is for the Gardevoir. Now, I, in some in some battle discussions, because I have little battle discussions, um, when preparing my team, 
uh, it was brought to my attention that there there could be a trick room set, I think with the Gardevoir it was. I find that very, uh, I find it very unlikely given the Mega Beedrill, the Kartana, the Crobat, a lot of fast things on his team that would not appreciate a trick room too much. However, on that off chance, Slowbro could kind of take advantage of that. And just in general, uh, Slowbro could somewhat take it. If I just need to eat a hit from the Gardevoir, I could pretty much do that. You know what? I didn't check. Oh no, I did check. Yeah, Shadow Ball, if it's not boosted, Gardevoir uh, does not two shot me with Shadow Ball. So, I mean, that's something. It gets pretty close to a, a two shot, though. So. More of an ideal situation would be already be plus one with Calm Mind when it comes in. I don't know if I could get that to happen. But anyway, uh, this set is pretty self-explanatory. I just kind of get in there and hope that I get some uh, boosts off and potentially sweep material. Otherwise, if I don't do that, it's pretty much just there to eat a hit if I need it to. And speaking of eating hits, we have Don Fan. Uh, Michelin, the same old, same old set um, that we've had. Stealth Rock Robinson, Earthquake Roar, Defensive Wall, it's all good. I live, um, I live in X Scissor from a Mega Beedrill. It's a, looks like a guaranteed three shot. So, that's nice. And Earthquake, I, I played around with maybe putting in some attack investment, but Earthquake will do somewhere between 92 and 110% to Mega Beedrill. So, I think Dawn Fan. Uh, I was talking about wanting Galvantula, but I think Donphan definitely needs a place on this team. Again, the hazards, the hazard removal. Uh, the Earthquake, potentially, I can take a hit from Beedrill and then uh, potentially one-shot it. Now, whether he'll stay in in that scenario, I don't know. Uh, but also with the Roar. This is to prevent uh, Kartana, Beedrill, Gardevoir, anything else that can get boosting moves. This is to kind of mess mess with that. Now, the way Donphan is with Sturdy, I probably only get one shot at that, so probably only one of his boosting Pokémon will I get to stop. Um, but it's a it's an option. If I get the right setup, I just like kind of stay in, and once Donphan has kind of uh, outlived its usefulness, I just try to roar things as much as possible. Um, yeah. But Earthquake also does a pretty good chunk to the Volcanion. Or Volcanion? Volcanion, I guess. Anyway. Volcanion is going to be one of those Pokemon, before I have the battle, I'm going to probably need to do a little extra research on Volcanion. One thing I know for sure, it hits pretty hard, uh, but I need to, so I need to hit it with some strong ground moves. The rock damage would help, actually. After rocks, Earthquake either goes just shy of KOing it or KOs it. Like, minimum, min roll on Earthquake is 74.8%. Stealth Rock damage would do 25%, so he could live on 0.2% of health if it, if it you know, doesn't round down. Uh, but, but more than likely, with Stealth Rocks up, that would set me up pretty good. Um, and, yeah. Potentially one-shots the Mega Beedrill. Looks like about a 50-50 shot. A little more than a 50% chance to one-shot the Beedrill. Which is, which is pretty nice. Um, Alright, so let's move on now to Espeon. Um, I'm running the Scarf set on Espeon in case he gets the bright idea to Scarf the Gardevoir. And it's also to outspeed- I outspeed the Crobat, I outspeed Kartana, uh, and actually, actually no, the Kartana might be Scarfed. I was saying to myself that the- he wouldn't need to Scarf the Kartana because it easily outspeeds everything on my team, but actually, um, when it comes to base speed, I do outspeed it with Espeon by one point, so he may just scarf it. He may just scarf it. Um, but if he doesn't, I would count on a choice banded set. But he may scarf it. He may he may scarf Tana. I have to be I have to be aware of that. Now I don't um, I can't really touch it with Espeon. I can hit it with Shadow Ball. Actually, you know what does Shadow Ball do to Kartana? That might be worth calcing, just because Kartana does not have that great of special defense. Um, I I haven't done my calcs here, but I'm gonna do some cal. Well, I've done I've done some calcs, but I haven't done that calc yet. I'm gonna do a calc here, here real quick. Let me pull it up. Um, anyway, though, in the meantime, uh, this 
is mainly if he decides to scarf the Gardevoir. I can outspeed it. Now again, on a one-on-one -on -one against the Gardevoir, I think the Gardevoir still wins. Uh, I don't remember how much a Shadow Ball from Gardevoir will do to me. If I can live one, then I can outspeed it and it'll work. Uh, all right, let's see. Oh, what, what the? Not Carrot Blast. Okay, I'm, I'm just doing the calcs here. Cartana. Let's see. Um, Shadow Ball does, like, it's a guaranteed two-shot. So, I mean, it's not the preferred situation because Leaf Blade will just straight up take me out. Um, he could do a Swords Dance set. Uh... Or a Choice Band set, or a Choice Scarf set, um, it, it, it all depends. If he does Choice Scarf, well, if he does Choice Scarf, actually, I still outspeed it. Uh, so that's good. Um, and Shadow Ball, uh... Well, actually, it, it resists Stealth Rock, so that wouldn't be enough, but it'll... I can chip it down um, between that and Shadow Ball. If I can get it to go out and come back in again, then I'll have it. So, I mean... This would not be my first choice to send out, uh, to send out Espeon against the Kartana. However, I think, uh, it, it's an option. It's something to keep in mind. So I should write that down. That Shadow Ball, if I have room for it, Shadow Ball does 79.1 to 93.2% to Kartana. Even Psychic is a guaranteed two-shot, so um, being resisted, that's a pretty good amount of damage. So I'll, I'll just keep that in mind, it's an option. But anyway, um, the rest of these calcs, uh, Dazzling Gleam, obviously one-shot Scrafty. For a while I was worried that Scrafty could get Sucker Punch, but I looked it up, does not appear that Scrafty could get Sucker Punch. So if I end up Espeon out there against the Scrafty, I pretty much hit Dazzling Gleam no matter what. Uh, he's got a couple things that resist it. But with that being said, I think it's too good of an opportunity to pass up. I mean, I guess it'll depend on what he brings, but that's the plan for now. Uh, Dazzling Gleam also does up to 96% to Zygarde, 10%. Again, I'd rather it did more, but it's two-shot. It's something that I can live with, and if Zygarde... I don't know what kind of sets Zygarde 10% tends to run. If it's not Scarfed, I outspeed it. Um... He might have a Dragon Dance set, which is, you know, again, another reason to have Michelin around. Uh, da da da. Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is still pitiful to Necrozma because of that uh, Prism Armor, making everything. It, it doesn't make super effective hits neutral, but it, it basically halves the boost. It makes it like having Stab again, so it, it makes it do 1.5 times damage instead of 2 times damage. But I can do up to 44% to the Necrozma, not bad. 80% to the Trevenant. Um, and yeah, up to 93% to the Kartana. And Psychic and Sh Psyshock both one-hit KO Crobat. I think I need to scope things out, though, because obviously if it's carrying, I don't know, anything strong... Actually, Crobat does not get... Oh no, it gets x or that's what I need to worry about from that. Um, Psy Psychic, again, just... Uh, just, um, giving myself options. If he brings out the Volcanion, uh, if it's Assault Vested, I do up to 42% to it. If it's not Assault Vested, it's a guaranteed two-hit KO. I think it is a little more than half, uh, like 60-something percent. Again, not an ideal situation. Volcanion hits pretty hard, but if I get into an emergency situation and I just need to hit it with something really hard, that is something. That plus rocks, if I have rocks up, it's something. Okay, but moving on now. We have Shaman. Uh, still gonna keep Dazzling Gleam over Earth Power, because again, Earth Power, um, other than the Volcanion, which I can still hit it with a neutral Seed Flare and two-shot it if it's Assault Vested. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Actually, no, I have Earth Power. Uh, I was Dazzling Gleam instead of Hidden Power Electric. Sorry about that. Hidden Power Electric, uh, not doing as much for me. I need Dazzling Gleam. It one-hits, one-shots the Scrafty. It has a tiny chance to one-shot one Zygarde 10%. Um, so I think, again, Zygarde 10% is faster than Zygarde 50%, so that I have to keep in mind. Again, 
Might consider putting uh, putting sticky webs on this team if I can. Uh, let's see. But I can get pretty close to a one-shot with that. Uh, Shaman could be a pretty good check to the Zygarde. Not as good of a check as it was to, to 50%, but it's something. Yeah, Earth Power is a two-shot on an Assault Vested Volcanion. So that means it'll probably be still a two-shot without Assault Vest, but it'll do a lot. Again, last resort, kind of, or if I've already got it a little lowered, because I don't take a hit very well from Volcanion, being a Fire-type and all. Um... One, uh, Seed Flare, one shots Gastrodon, no surprise there. Uh, between that and Charizard with Solar Beam, that'll be, those would be my two checks to Gastrodon. I should be okay there. Um, let's see. 90, 79.5 to 95% to an Assault Vested Lantern. If Lantern is not running Assault Vest, it just straight up gets one shot, I believe. So that is that. And again, 59.8 to 71.5% to Necrozma. Nothing really... Well, actually, that is the one of the only moves I have that potentially two-shots it. Now, this is assuming bold, I believe. This is what this calc was for. I, I don't remember. If it's specially defensive, I'm in for a little bit more problems, but hey, maybe I can get the special defense drop. We'll see, and get a revenge kill. Again, it's all going to depend on how things play out. Okay, now we're going back to Surya, who um, made his debut in the last battle. Our mixed set Charizard, max attack max speed, with a little bit of special attack there. Uh, kind of a weird set. Um, still got the same moveset as before, but again, Solar Beam instead of Air Slash. Now, I actually played around with having Flame Charge instead of Dragon Dance. Thinking that, it, it's worth noting, Flame Charge guaranteed one-shots Beedrill and, Gar and Kartana, which shouldn't be a surprise. Um, just... There were certain situations where having Flame Charge was a little bit nicer than having Dragon Dance because even if, um, even if, like, if, if I Dragon Dance and on that turn he switches into something that I don't want to stay in on, I just lose that boost no matter what. Meanwhile, if I go for Flame Charge, I at least get some chip damage off. Like, if it's something like Volcanion, it's going to take so little damage anyway that it's not a big deal, but it's worth noting. Although, honestly, if I'm plus one... If I'm plus one, I did not do the calcs on Earthquake against Volcanion. If I'm plus one and he sends in Volcanion, I'm pretty sure I just Earthquake for the win. Well, let me check that out one second. Let's do... Uh, the one annoying thing about having this set on Charizard is when I type it up, I have to do the EVs from scratch because it's a set that nobody has on a Mega Charizard Y. All right, we're gonna do naive. Um, we're gonna do four in special attack and 252 in attack and give you flare, flare blitz, uh, solar beam and flame. Well, I'll put flame charge on there just to see and then the other one was earthquake. So, and then let's get out of Volcanion Canyon. I'm not sure what set to put on here, but it doesn't really matter in this case. Earthquake, okay. So Earthquake is not quite do it. If I do get plus one on it, it does up to 70 something percent, uh, which might be worth the risk if I have rocks up. Keep in mind that in the sun, Steam Eruption has, well, it has like a 35, 37.5% chance to one shot. That's on a choice spec set. So, it does depend on what, what he's running. Um, yeah, all right, well, I, I should write this down. Earthquake does, wait, let me do the unboosted, so I just go from there. Um, again, it's one of those things where if I can just get chip damage off over time, then it'd be worth taking some of these risks with these hits, but yeah, I do need to consider uh, my options here. Okay, but let's, but you've seen this set. You basically know what it does. I, I, like I said, I went back and forth between Dragon Dance and Flame Charge. Um, I'm still thinking about it. I, I still might pick Flame Charge over Dragon Dance. I'm not sure yet. That plus one power would be nice because being increased in power will help me against the Necrozma. It'll help me against the 
Volcanion, even if I'm not enough to one-shot it. Now, Necrozma, I have to, I'm aware, uh, can run Power Gem, and he's run Power Gem on Necrozma before, so I almost expect it. He ran his Z-move on it, actually, with Z-Power Gem. So if he really, really, really wants the Charizard gone, he'll probably do that, but we'll see. Um, anything else um, about this set? I don't think so. I think that's about it. Uh, keeping in mind, Solar Beam is still going to be really powerful. My special attack, un um, minimally invested, is still a bit more than my attack. So yeah, this is a mixed set here. And let's move on to our last member here, Landris. Um, this set you see here, I have two sets. Let me talk about what's the same. The EVs are the same. Uh, the U-Turn, Earthquake, and Knockoff are the same. The only difference is, on this set, I have Rockium Z and Stone Edge. Um, on, on an alternate set that I've been trying, I have Flyanium Z with Fly. Um, and I might go back to Flyanium Z just because it does more to the Kartana, because it's neutral, versus Stone Edge being resisted. Um, as a last resort, if Kartana is just, like, set to sweep, I intimidate it and then I just hopefully live, hopefully live one, and then go, and just hit that Z move. That is, uh, that is my thought process. Now, um, and it also two shots the Necrozma. That's just a lot of power to waste on a two shot, though. Necrozma's gonna be an issue. Okay, but let's talk about, before I go to the Z move, let's talk about, okay, U-turn, does like up to 20, 27% to the Necrozma. It's just a generally good pivot turn. It's not gonna be doing a whole lot of work as far as dealing damage, but you know, when it comes to talking about Necrozma, get some chip damage off if that's the case. Um, get chip damage off on just about anything. Uh, get, um, it's not gonna be doing a lot to the Beedrill, or, well, Kartana will be neutral. Um, but again, if I find myself in that situation, I think I just Z-move on the Kartana regardless. Now, the reason I'm not running Z-Earthquake is because of that Crobat being there. I don't want the chance that I end up in a scenario where I have to use it and potentially it gets wasted if the Crobat switches in. Um, Earthquake, okay, one-shots Mega Beedrill, it one-shots Lantern, it one-shots Volcanion. Worth noting, it one-shots Volcanion, you know, and completely just flat-out does. Uh, Volcanion has base 90 speed. I should outspeed it since I'm jolly, and base 91 speed. I should outspeed it by, I don't even know how it works, one point. Um, if he's running a speedy set on his Volcanion. Uh, he might, I don't, I don't know if I've seen a Volcanion scarf set as an option. He might get, you know, he might get zesty and want to do that. He might. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, let's move on. I... Alright, Earthquake does 90... 90.9 90 to 107.6% to Gardevoir, so I have, again, a little less than a 50% chance to one-shot the Gardevoir. Which, if it's not scarfed, I, I do that just fine. Just fine. Uh, knockoff and almost guaranteed one shot to the Trevenant only does up to 38% to the Necrozma, but hey, it might be nice to get rid of its item, depending on what it's holding. And does a good up to 70%, well, 69.9% to Gardevoir. So, if I catch it on a Switch, why would I catch a Gardevoir on a Switch into a Landorus? I don't know. But it's just things to keep in mind. Now, about the Z move. Okay, so I, already, I originally I was doing Z Fly, but with the fly name Z, because it did 96.2 to 114.1% to Kartana. It also Oko's the Crow, uh, Oko's the Crobat, Oko's the Gardevoir. It does 57.3 to 67.6% to Necrozma. Not bad, I wouldn't want to waste it on that, but if my hand is forced, it is what it is. If it switches into it, it's still gonna take some damage from it. Now, the reason I'm thinking about Stone Edge is for, well, for one thing, it's the um, the fact that once I use my Z move with Fly, I really can't use Fly anymore because unless I'm in like a one v one situation, uh, it's just like it's a two turn attack. What can I do? It's really easy to predict, and it gives him way too much freedom. So I can't really use Fly once I've used my Z move. It's just not practical. 
with Stone Edge, it's, you know, I have that chance of missing, but once I use it, or even before I use the Z-move, I have the option to Stone Edge, I don't know, lots of things. Stone Edge the Volcanion. I mean, again, I only have to Earthquake, but if the Crobat is around, I can click Stone Edge and be almost as well off. It's not Stab, but it's the same base power. I have to risk the chance of missing, but it's gonna do a lot to a lot of things. I haven't, it's, this is a more recent addition, so I haven't done the calcs yet. I'd imagine it still does a lot to the Volcanion. Uh, I mean, it, it'll kill the Mega Beedrill because I just pretty much have to hit it with any physical move with this thing, I think, and I will one-shot the Mega Beedrill. Uh, what I want to check, though, is the Kartana. I want to check the Kartana here. We're about- we're almost done, guys. Uh, did I make this another super long episode- or super long video? Alright, we're at 25 minutes. I'll try to keep this brief. I'll just, uh, finish this thought here. Alright, what am I doing? Oh, this is a set, actually, with, uh, with the Z Stone Edge here. Alright, let me go U-turn. And what was the other one? Knock off. I, oh yeah, I was considering running Swords Dance. Uh, honestly, I might still. Okay, so Z Stone Edge easily one-shots the Volcanion. It does 89... Uh, Stone Edge regular does 89% to Volcanion. But we're looking at Kartana now. Let's see. Let us see, let us see. Again, it's gonna outspeed me, so I have to keep that in mind. But depending on its set... Well, let's see. Earthquake... Normal Earthquake does up to 71%. The Z Stone Edge only does like 42.5%. So I'm thinking I might go back to Flyneum Z. I just kind of like the option of having Stone Edge as a move I can use aside from just my Z move. It depends on how worried I am about the Kartana versus other things. But really, like, like Z Fly, whatever it's called. It's still gonna do supersonic airstrike, whatever. It's still gonna do a lot to just about anything, you know, except the lantern, and that's about it, I guess. And I could use a move like Sky Drop instead. Let me just run the calcs on it real quick. Let me run the calcs on Sky Drop. Hopefully it's well, I don't I have to check. I think the 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 Sky Drop glitch has been fixed. I mean, it only does 85%. Now let me do fly. This has... Oh, this has Z fly. Is this a different set that I'm looking at? This has Z fly... doing 105 minimum to Kartana. I might just have to run this thing. I might just have to run Z fly. I might just have to. Hmm. I don't know, I have to think about that. Anyway guys, that's gonna about wrap it up. I mean, if I'm gonna make a, just an end of video sort of prediction of what I'm expecting him to bring the most, I think Mega Beedrill, Kartana, Volcanion are pretty much given- Necrozma for sure. Um, actually, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that top row right there was his team. Mega Beedrill, Kartana, Volcanion, Crobat, Necrozma, and Gardevoir. Uh, it has it has some common weaknesses, but that that's a lot of power on his team. He might bring the Scrafty. He might bring the Zygarde, the Zydoge. Uh, he might, well... You know, here's the other thing that I'm worried about with Slowbro, is that he has three in Volcanion, Lantern, and Gastrodon. He has three potential things to shut down all water attacks. But... I don't know, like I said, I'm gonna be doing some last minute preparations with this team and maybe some reconfiguring of the team. But this is the general, my general thought process, my general idea. If things change a bit on game day, we'll see. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, show your Orlando pride. Let's see if we can get out another win today. I'm not sure, but it's gonna be interesting this time because whatever mistakes we make in this game, we get to learn from them, and we get a second try in two weeks. So that'll be kind of neat. And it'll be probably stressful. If I do well, it'll be stressful. But uh, it'll be interesting, because we'll, we'll, we'll get to see each other's teams and see what we picked against each other and sort of get a second chance. So that'll be fun. All right, guys. 
Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you by the time this goes up. I'm, I'm guessing this is going to go up the same day as the... I don't know when the battle is going to happen. So either in a few hours or tomorrow, it'll be game time. So show your Orlando pride. I will see you then for week five of the PGBL Orlando Sogaleo versus New Jersey Brobats round one.